I want to go back to some of the band-aids and things you mentioned the SIBO. So of course, we're going to be testing and looking at your gut and trying to get that resolved because a, a restrictive diet, regardless of how restricted or what type of restrictions there are, that's that's still not root cause, right? Like someone could just say, well, I feel fine. I've got five foods that I can eat. It's like, well, that's not a way to live. You can only eat five things. Otherwise you're miserable. That's not a way to live. You're missing something. So in the meantime, though, you mentioned enzymes, which can be good. And then also you and I can use some type of herbal antihistamines. So we may throw in like um, one ingredient we use Japanese Sephora. That is something that naturally contains quercetin. And quercetin can help stabilize some of these reactions. You've got stinging nettle, which can be helpful. You've got uh, sodium bicarbonate is added to some histamine solutions we use. Vitamin C can help with histamine reactions. What else? I mean, there's a ton that I know of. I don't have the full list in front yeah, of me. Yeah, I would also say just DAO enzyme, diamine oxidase, and you can get that in kidney glandular tissue which helps break down the enzymes. And some people, we need to just be on a lower histamine diet as well. That could be a big one too. I've seen people when we go after like H. pylori infections or gut infections, sometimes this, the body gets overwhelmed, the immune system and the toxification system get overwhelmed and the skin gets used as a means to push things out of. It's very possible that's the case. So we kind of, go, I've gone on a couple of tangents, but I want to bring it all home, right? Anytime we have stress in the gut, the skin can be affected. So I'm just trying to like zoom out. Okay, here are all the things that can happen in the gut. But anytime I'm talking about the gut, the skin's intimately connected with that as well. So just keep that in the back of your head, everyone listening. The more we can reduce inflammation in the gut, we automatically help the skin, number one. And then number two, when we have issues with the skin, we can always do things to kind of help. Um, I mean, there are different essential oils that can be used if it's an eczema reaction. Peppermint's excellent. Uh, calendula's uh, really good. If it's eczema or psoriatic reaction, usually psoriasis is more flaky, eczema isn't. Uh, and there's an autoimmune component. So we really just, we, we default back to that autoimmune diet. I have parents that tell me, well, my kid's on it like 60% or 70% or 80%. It's like, it's not enough. That's the equivalent of your kid having a peanut allergy and being like, well, he only eats peanuts one day a week. It's like, no, it doesn't work. Like you got to be a hundred percent to see the benefit because every time you stimulate the immune response, there's a reaction and there's a reaction. And part of the healing comes from not, not stimulating that immune system. And then we give healing nutrients to calm it down, whether it's collagen or whether it's DGL or aloe or just kind of soothing things, ginger. Um, these are all you know clean amino acids. These are all really good things. The enterocytes in our gut, those leaky gut junctions are made from, there's, there, amino acids are actually needed to help with that. That's why the GAPS diet is so high in glycine from organ meats and collagen and bone marrow is so high in glycine because the glycine really helps with the enterocyte uh, tight junction. So, and that's an amino acid and it's going to be an amino acid that's going to be lower in plant-based products too.